Well, like everything in my body is saying, why would you do this? We have just arrived at Joshua Tree National Park. And we're gonna see as much of it as we can see. It's a pretty big park at 800,000 acres. We just got our pass at the Cottonwood Visitor Center and it costs $30 for a seven day pass. We also picked up a free map with uh, details about some of the wildlife and plant life in the park and the map of some of the things to see. We're at the Choya Cactus Garden. It's this huge expanse that has all these Choya cactus. We've had warnings from the park ranger and signs everywhere not to get too close. It's called a jumping cactus because apparently if you get even slightly near the spines can go into you and can be very painful and very difficult to remove. It's like the don't press the button but I want to press the button. As you're approaching the Choya cactus garden you start to see them on the sides of the roads and then they just kind of become more dense until there's just choya cactus as far as the eye can see. There's thousands of them here. I don't know why, don't know how, but it's kind of neat. So Mel asks, what's this stop? I'm like, I don't know, rocks that you can climb maybe? where the like the slight fear of heights that I have comes into play because I'm like I went up I went up and now I'm like oh we're I'm high, up high. <laughs> will we be able to get down stay tuned for the exciting conclusion <laughs> busy time at this park is between October through May so the winter months are their busy season any of the major attractions that we've come across the parking lots are absolutely jam-packed full. Also, it is a Saturday, so I'm sure by the time Monday hits, it'll be a lot less busy. Ah, uh, good point. I think it's more obvious from like this side of the rock instead of where we are. It's a rock, kind of, sort of looks like a skull. Very, very popular. Took forever to park. <laughs> Took forever to walk here. <laughs> Hashtag not worth it. <laughs> I think the rocks in behind Skull Rock are actually more interesting. Oh, way cooler. Okay, I. I totally take back the hashtag not worth it. <laughs> look, look at that one. It looks kind of like an animal head. I was just thinking like a big eye with a big nose. And you want to just roll that rock down? <laughs> We're trying to get like up as high as we can. And I don't think we, we have high hopes. High hopes, ha! I'm trying to figure a way out around here. And Jay thinks he might be able to squeeze through. I'm going to take off the backpack. Yeah. Oh, it's getting tight. Oh, it's getting real tight. You'll it's make it. Really tight. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> okay, I made it. I remembered my grippy gloves from the truck for this one, so I'm happy. Um, See? <laughs> I wasn't over-dramatizing. It's a tight fit. My butt is too big. <laughs> <laughs> We're totally keeping that part in. You like go to hoist yourself, but you can't like move side to side. You have to go up. And I want to... Pop my head up over this. Up, up. We're basically trying to take the most direct route through the rocks to our truck. Didn't even touch the floor. Boom. Our first stop of the day is here at the Cottonwood Spring, near the Cottonwood Campground, near the southern entrance of the Joshua Tree National Park. And we are doing the Mastodon Trail Loop. It's a 2.4 mile loop. And uh, yeah, just starting out the day with a little exercise. We walked a little this way and we're like, it smells it's like barbecue. barbecue. <laughs> it's mesquite. <a> mesquite. <laughs>
I love these little things. I call them baby palms, but they're actually not palms. They're some type of yucca. We'll look it up. Over in the distance, it looks like water. But I don't think there's any water around here. Maybe it's a desert mirage. Ooh. We spotted our first desert wildlife. It's a lizard. Get a good shot? Yep. Right, we're gonna try and climb up there somewhere as far as we can go. Getting steep? Yeah. <laughs> I need two hands. Yeah, let me take that water bottle. Thank you. A little easier with both hands? Way easier with both hands. Oh, look at this. We're on top. Woohoo! Well, that wasn't too hard at all. No, and it's so worth it. Now we're on top of the world. Mastodon mine. Oh cool, there's bats. It's like they're telling you the mines are home to bats as if to try to deter you. For me, that's like a, ooh, let's go see. That's where we were, right up there. We've seen two types of lizards on this walk. A kind of black one and a kind of greenish speckled one. So we're gonna have to look up what those actually are. In case you're wondering, why aren't we just looking up on our phone right now? Uh, there's no signal in most of the park here. So mm -hmm. if you are coming and you're going to be doing some uh, backcountry hiking or anything, make sure you're prepared with some kind of communication device in case you get into trouble. Or in case you fall. Sheesh. <laughs> <laughs> and watch your step when you're walking on loose gravel. Make sure to download your offline maps. We still use Google Maps in offline mode. So look up how to do that, and yeah. then you'll be able to use that and have less of a chance of getting lost. Yeah. Bring lots of water, wear layers. Mm -hmm. uh, in the warmer months, you probably want a lot of sunscreen yeah. and a hat. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is the desert after all. Yeah. Coming up on another little oasis here. We figured out what the baby palms are. <laughs> We didn't even have to look it up. They had an interpretive sign right on the trail, which is so perfect. So it's a Mojave yucca net. This is called the Bayata Trail. It's a little nature trail right at the south entrance. Mel like signs. You learn more when you read them. Creosote. It's called ironwood. It's found only on this Bayata. This is an Ocotillo. And look, it's got a flower. I didn't think they bloomed until spring. Palo Verde. Now we know what that is. We just noticed that it's going to be a full moon tonight and one of the signs in the park said that you can often see more creatures on a moonlit walk. We're getting ready for our night hike. Mel's getting some mittens and some earmuffs. Desert's cold at night. So it gets dark and we go back to the Bahada Trail and I'm a total chicken when it comes to being out in the dark and suddenly like every tree looks weird to me. Every sound <laughs> kind of freaked me out a little. What I thought might have been a person was a tree. So we do the trail and just as we're getting near the end and there's like something round and reflecting back at us. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there's an animal in this bush. So I'm standing back. But Jay, being the much more courageous one of us, gets out the flashlights and he starts looking in the bush. And all of a sudden he starts laughing and he says, it's a beer bottle. So all that drama for a beer bottle. <laughs> First off, let me just say what a difference coming here during the week makes. We drove past this site on a Saturday, our first day exploring the park, and there was no parking available. Now we're here on a Monday and we just drove right in. It's great. So if you have a drone, you should note that they charge a $180 drone fee. We've decided not to pay that fee this time. Some kind of little squirrel. We are at the Hall of Horrors and we've seen some videos and it looks really scary because <laughs> you go through these like tight little tunnels and it's dark 
but I don't know. We're going to check it out for ourselves and see how scary it actually is. We're getting to the first cave-like area and I'm already feeling a little cautious. I'm not even sure how we're going to get through that. Are you able to go down underneath? Do you think you can squeeze through there? This has been a very long pause, by the way. I'm just, um, I'm kind of scared. I'm like such a chicken. You'd have to go like feet first or something. Well, like everything in my body is saying, why would you do this? But the adventure side of me is saying, what are you waiting for? There's a headspace. Oh yeah. That's not bad. There's, there's room. All right, you did it. Coming up over that. Look at you go. Watch, watch all the poop. Well, that's how I got the gloves. <laughs> so we weren't quite sure how to do this part. I'm going to call this the uh, lazy boy recliner technique. I wouldn't want to fall down there. You'd be... You would be hurt. Stuck. No, this actually feels very <laughs> secure. I just hope your legs are long enough to do the same thing. Push off and go up here. If your feet are wedged and your back is wedged, you're not going anywhere. You're basically just sitting. And there are quite a few rat droppings in these caves. All right, we're to the other side. We can see daylight. This is lovely. One, One two, three. three. I did not think I was going to be the one that was going to have problems with this. I honestly thought Jay was going to have the problems. And sure enough, it was me. Um, I feel really good, though. I conquered that. <laughs> Those fears, I just pushed through it. Now I can just enjoy the wide open spaces of Joshua Tree National Park. <laughs> We're now going up a path that a couple told us wasn't too bad. Proving to be a bit difficult there. I think we found an entrance to one of those inner chambers, but it looks like you'd have to crawl to get in there. Maybe if I go backwards, it'll seem better. It's getting lower right there, yeah. I'm actually belly crawling. Plank pose <laughs> is paying off. And now you're in. Oh, there's lots of space. So cool, though. I don't know what I'm getting into. There's another into. little cavern in there. This one here is very open once you get inside. Yeah, like way more open. Where does this lead to? I don't know. I, like oh, I think it just comes right out. Well, pretty simple from this side. Just <laughs> walk right in. We took the hard way. <laughs> Hello! Oh, my poor knees. Oh, yeah, oh. knee pads. Bye! <laughs> And we're at ground level again. Oh, another successful passage. So my only fear with this experience was we are pretty much right along the San Andreas fault line. So it is an area prone to earthquakes. And these boulders, I mean, they don't look like they're really solid. They look like they could just kind of topple over at any point. However, you have to think, they've probably survived hundreds of massive earthquakes and they're not going anywhere, so probably not a realistic fear that it's all going to come toppling down on you. That was so one of my fears too. <laughs> was it? <laughs> it was. I didn't want to say anything, but I, I was like, I was like, there could be an earthquake and we could be buried alive. <laughs> okay, my favorite thing of the Hall of Horrors was having the opportunity to like conquer some unknown fears that I had. Apparently I have this big fear of being buried alive. I already know about a bit of a fear of heights. I'm really happy and kind of a bit proud of myself for being able to do that. So that's, I think, probably my favorite thing about this experience is the opportunity to grow. Setting up for a little picnic here at Keys View. Can't do much better than this view. Well, we've had our little picnic and that concludes our stay at Joshua Tree National Park. We hope you enjoyed it. What was your favorite part? Let us know in the comments. So while we were here exploring Joshua Park, we stayed in the BLM land just south of the south entrance of the park. We had lots of space, more than you would get in a campground, and it was pretty clean, um, nice and quiet. It was, it was great. Be sure to check out our California desert video yep. for more of that. 800,000 kilometers. No. Start again. So as you're approaching the Choya... Mel's very curious about what lives in that hole. For... What am I trying to say? Oh, you're already recording running. already. Okay. Yep. So dry here, we keep shocking each other. Make sure you don't miss the next video by liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you in the next one.